So today we're going to talk about solving one-step equations with addition and subtraction. And I already have some information printed on this page, but everything on this page is really important that you have in your notes. So if you need to pause the video to write anything down, please do so throughout the video. So in a previous lesson, we played around with these puzzles and we tried to attach different values to each shape to balance the puzzle. So equations work the same exact way. So just like we had to make sure that each side of this balance was equal, equations show us that two expressions are equal or balanced. So if we look at this puzzle like it's an equation, I have one side of the, basically our equal sign, which would be the middle of the puzzle, one side of it would be an expression, the hexagon and the moon, and the two triangles is another expression. And we just want to make sure the values of each of those expressions together is the same to keep the equation balanced. So usually in an equation, you have an unknown piece of information. And with the puzzles, we had different shapes that we didn't know. But sometimes, or most of the time in algebra, we have these unknown variables like x or y or a. So in order to solve for those variables or to find out what they, their value is, we can use something called inverse operations to solve for an unknown piece of an equation or a variable. And a variable is just any like unknown letter in an equation that we need to find. So it can be like x or y or a, those are some pretty common ones, but it can truly be any letter. We just try to avoid letters that also look like numbers. So inverse operations are operations that undo another one. So they basically work like opposites. So make sure you do have this definition in your notes, inverse operations, an operation that undoes another operation. Again, they work like opposites, so they just reverse each other pretty much. So if my operation is addition, the inverse operation of addition is subtraction. And the inverse operation of subtraction is addition because addition adds something and subtraction takes it away. So they reverse each other. And then for multiplication, the inverse of multiplication is division and the inverse of division is multiplication. They undo each other. So for example one, I have x plus one equals five. So what operation is being used? I have this unknown variable that I'm trying to solve for. I have this x. So I need to figure out what x is, and I have a number that's being added to x. So the operation that's being used here is addition. And now we need to perform the inverse operation to both sides of the equation. That part's very important. So if my operation in the equation is addition, the inverse of that is going to be subtraction. So specifically with this equation, what's being done to the x is adding 1. So the inverse of that would be subtracting 1. But it's really important if we think of this equation as a balance or as a scale, this left side has to be equal to this right side. So if I subtract 1 from the left side to undo this plus 1, I also have to subtract it from the right side to keep that balance the same, to keep it the same on both sides. So when I do that, I'm going to bring down this x, because that still stays on that side of the equal sign. And then I have a positive one or a plus one, and I'm subtracting one from it. So that cancels out, and that's just zero. And you can write the zero there if you want to, but you don't have to. Make sure you bring down that equal sign and you keep everything lined up. And then a 5 minus 1 is 4. Once you get to x equals or y equals and it's just one number, then you've, you're done and you've solved that equation. So our solution is x equals 4. And then for example 2, we have x minus 7 equals 19. So what operation is being used? It looks like if I'm trying to solve for x, I have to figure out what's being done to the x. So 7 is being subtracted from the x. So the operation that's being used is subtraction.
And now we need to perform the inverse operation to both sides of the equation to solve for x. So if the operation being used is subtraction, then the inverse of subtraction is addition. So specifically with this problem, we're subtracting 7, so I have to add 7. The opposite of subtracting 7 would be to add 7. So I'm going to add 7 to both sides, and I'm going to keep it lined up under my minus 7 and then under my 19. If there were, say, another letter or another variable on this side of the equation, you would want to make sure the 7 stays up lined up with the 19 because those are what we call like terms. So next I'm going to bring down my x. And then I can add my 7. So a minus 7 and a plus 7, or a negative 7 and a plus 7, those cancel out because they're inverse operations. So they become 0. You don't need to write the 0. And then make sure you bring down your equal sign. And then 19 plus 7 is 26. So we have our x by itself. And that tells us that we are finished solving. We have our x by itself. And the right side of the equation is simplified. So I have x equals. 26 is my solution to that equation. And then we have three practice problems. So I would like you to pause the video and practice these on your own and then continue to play the video when you're done to check your answers. So x plus 5 equals 7. I'm trying to get x by itself in order to solve. So I can first identify what operation is being done to the x. So 5 is being added to the x. So un to undo that, I need to subtract 5 from both sides. So I'm going to bring down my x. 5 minus 5, that cancels out. That's what we wanted to do because they're inverse operations. I'm going to bring down my equal sign. And then 7 minus 5 is 2. And now I have my x by itself, and the right side is simplified, so I have my solution. And then for number 2, I have 21 plus x equals 25. So now these are in a different order, so it's a little bit tricky, but one thing that we need to keep in mind is our goal is to get x by itself. And it looks like there's a positive 21 being added to that x. So the opposite of adding positive 21 to the x would be to subtract 21. So my operation one is adding. So in order to undo that, I'm going to subtract 21. It's okay if it's in a different order than the other problems. So uh, plus 21, minus 21, those undo each other. I'm going to bring down the x. I'm going to bring down the equal sign, and then 25 minus 21 is 4. My x is by itself. My right side of the equal sign is simplified, so I got x equals 4 as my solution. For number 3, I have 10 equals y minus 7. So now I have a different variable, but it still works the same way. We're still trying to solve for that unknown variable or that unknown shape. So I have 10 equals y minus 7. So the operation that's being done to the y is subtracting 7. So the opposite of subtracting or the inverse of subtracting is adding. In order to solve this equation, I need to add 7 to both sides. And then 10 plus 7 is 17. I'm going to bring down my equal sign. I'm going to bring down my y. And then the negative 7 or the minus 7 plus 7 cancels out because those are inverse operations. So I have y equal or I have y by itself and I have the other side of the equal sign simplified. So that's my solution. y equals 17.